Hey there, stats enthusiasts. Welcome back to our last video in our AP Statistics series on Unit 8, the Chi-Square Distribution. This is our last section of notes, notes four, where we are gonna be going over the final of our chi-square test. This is the chi-square test for association slash independence. We're gonna be learning about how this test is different from the other two tests we have talked about, and also how it's very similar to the last two tests we have talked about. So grab your notes, get settled in, and let's start this content together. We have made it to our last and final chi-squared test. This one is for the chi-squared test for association slash independence. Now this test is very similar to our homogeneity test, um, but the subtle difference in the, between the two is very important. Um, the key difference between these two tests is where the data comes from will impact the conclusions we can draw. Okay, in a chi-squared test for homogeneity, the data is gathered by taking two or more random samples. And therefore, whatever conclusions we come up with relate to how the data is distributed across those populations or across the treatments if we have two or more treatments. Okay. Now, in a chi-squared test for association slash independence, the data is gathered by taking a single random sample. And the conclusion we draw is different. It actually relates to how the two variables are related. And if one variable has an impact on the other variable, okay? So it's a subtle difference that you're gonna see in the problem, um, but it is a very important difference, okay? So in a chi-squared test for homogeneity, we would say as the null hypothesis is that there's no difference in the distribution of a categorical variable for the population or treatments, okay? And we put that in context. Now, the chi-square test for association independence, we also are gonna have a statement of like no difference, right? But we have to word it differently because now we are gonna look at the relationship between the two variables. And there's two ways you can state this null hypothesis. And this is kind of why we have association slash independence, okay? It's, it comes from the two ways we can write this null hypotheses. The first way is we can say two categorical variables are independent in a population of interest. Okay? So if the two categorical variables are independent, they don't affect one another, um, and we would assume when we calculate our expected counts that the distribution of um, all of those counts would be equal in proportion across the two variables, right? So the null is that they are independent. What we can also say is that there is no association between the two categorical variables in the population of interest. So again, if they're independent, they are not associated at all, right? They don't impact one another, they don't influence one another. So we can say the null hypothesis either way, okay? And that's why we have association slash independence, is because we could say the two variables are independent, or we could say there is no association between the two variables. It means the same thing, okay? Now, the alternative here. For the chi-squared test for homogeneity, we said that there is a difference, right? So we were testing to see if there is a difference where, versus our null was that there's no difference. Now, the alternative for our chi-squared test for association slash independence um, is also going to kind of follow that same template. If our null is that the two variables are independent, our alternative is that they are not independent, okay? That the two categorical variables are not independent in the population of interest. And then same thing with the other wording, okay? If there is no association as our null, our alternative is that there is an association, okay? So when you're writing down your null, I usually recommend that you look at the wording of the problem and the question they ask. And the question they ask in the problem will usually say, um, are the two variables independent? Or the, it'll say, are the two variables associated in some way? And usually I go off of that wording and I write my null hypotheses and my alternative hypotheses based on that wording. That's just the easiest way I've found to do it so that I don't get too confused. Um, but remember that our null is always that there's no difference 
um, no association, that they're independent, um, that's always still going to be our null hypotheses. And then our alternative will be the opposite of that. Now from here, after we write our null and alternative hypotheses, the conditions for the test are the same as the chi-squared test for homogeneity. Um, the expected counts, the chi-squared statistic, degrees of freedom p-value, they're all calculated the exact same way um, that we did for the homogeneity test. Um, the conclusion and follow-up analysis will also be kind of interpreted in the same manner, um, but adjusted for the new hypotheses, um, meaning that when you look at the contribution and what contributed the largest to the chi-squared statistic, you will adjust it saying, um, you know, that the variables are influencing one another in this way or that way, versus that it's differently distributed across um, populations, okay? So the three tests, these are our three tests. There's no more that we are that we are doing. These are it. So the GOF test is the claim distribution for a single categorical variable what is observed. Um, and uh, the data comes from one sample with multiple categories. Okay? The homogeneity test asks the question, is the distribution of a variable the same across several populations? And here the data comes from two or more random samples or two or more treatments, I should also say, right? And association is the distribution of two categorical variables. I'm getting uh, turned around in my words. Are they associated in the same population of interest? And here the data comes from one random sample with the individuals classified according to two categorical variables. Okay, so you take one sample and basically ask them two questions, right? What is this, where do you fall on this categorical variable and where do you fall on this, okay? Um, so from there, um, that is how you determine your three chi-squared tests and which one you run, okay? Um, it's very important to look to see where the data comes from, um, and then that'll let you know what test you are. Our final example in this section of notes then is going to be for a chi-squared test for association slash independence. So this example asks, what kinds of people do not use seatbelts? So a random sample of 459 people asked if they wear a seatbelt while driving and how many cigarettes they smoke per day. The study wanted to test the claim that the amount of smoking is independent of seatbelt use. This is a theory based on the idea that people who smoke are less concerned about their overall health and safety and are therefore less inclined to wear seatbelts. So is this theory supported by the data? Use a 0.05 significance level. So we see our observed counts there. Now, the reason this is a chi-square test for association slash independence is because of that single random sample of 459 people was taken. So they took that sample of people, that single sample, and then they asked them two questions. Do you wear a seatbelt and how many cigarettes do you smoke per day? And because of that, that's why it's the association slash independence test. So our null and alternative are going to reflect that. So the null is going to be the amount of cigarettes a person smokes per day is independent of whether they wear a seatbelt or not. And the alternative is that they are not independent and that there is an association between them. So I, I used independent and not independent for my hypotheses just because that's kind of the language the problem gave. But remember, you can use the independent language or the association language. That is up to you. Um, after we have our null and alternative hypotheses, we want to calculate our expected counts. Now, again, you can do this by hand, but since we know how to do this on our calculator with our matrices, I am going to take you through doing that. So with our matrix, um, I'm going to put in matrix A a 2 by 4 of all of my observed counts. So those were all of my observed counts that were given in the problem. And then to get the expected counts, I do have to run the chi-squared test, and I'm going to store the expected counts in matrix B. So that after I run this test and I go to matrix B, I see a 2 by 4 with all of those expected counts there. Okay? And I'll put them in the table. From there, I want to name my test. Again, you can kind of name your test anywhere, um, but make sure you name it for the chi-squared test. This is for association slash independence. And I'm gonna check my conditions. Um, the condition here, a single random sample was taken. 
Uh, and then independent, um, because the sample was taken, I have to make sure that my total number, my 459 people, are less than 10% of all adults in the population. And then all my expected counts you saw were larger than five. So that condition is also met. Remember if that condition is never not met in this situation when you're doing a four step problem, just to comment on it and say, you know, this cell doesn't have an expected count of five. So our conclusions might not be correct, right? But we still continue on with the problem. Draw attention to it if one of your conditions is not met, but still continue on with the inference procedure. We want to put in our um, work for our chi-squared statistic. So remember, we go cell by cell here, right? So this is the first cell, the observed and expected counts. Um, and then uh, you can just do two contributions first. And then the plus dot 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 plus just shows that the pattern continues. And then finish with that last contribution, those who do not wear a seatbelt, and then those who uh, smoke more than 35 cigarettes in a day, okay? Then they'll give you your chi-squared statistic. You can also pull this from your calculator too, since you know how to run the test. You just have to make sure that you show this work, okay? Show the work, show the values plugged in, um, put that down, and then you can use your calculator to get your chi-squared statistic and your degrees of freedom. And remember that degrees of freedom came from the fact that we have two rows, so two minus one, and then we had four columns. Right, so two minus one times four minus one, and that's how we got our degrees of freedom of three. And then we can use our chi-squared CDF to find the p-value, or if you run your test, your p-value is just given. It's gonna be 0.098, okay? Now we compare that with our significance level, um, and because our p-value of 0 0.098 is greater than our significance level, we would fail to reject our null hypotheses, which means we do not have convincing evidence that the amount of cigarettes a person smokes per day is not independent of whether they wear a seatbelt. In other words, we found um, that there was, uh, that they don't depend on each other. We don't have evidence to say that they do depend on each other, okay? So not independent, um, you can replace that with is dependent just because we don't have convincing evidence of it. Not to say that they're not related, but just that we didn't find evidence in this test, okay? And that wraps up our series on AP Statistics, the chi-squared distribution. That brings us to the end of unit eight. In our next unit, unit nine, we are going to be going back to inference for quantitative data and revisiting our correlation and regression unit. So thank you guys so much for following along. I appreciate you. And if you have liked my videos, please click the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great AP statistics content. I will see you in the next series. So until then, I wish you endless statistical success and I will see you next time.